Hello, this is Jacob Hofer with the Hofer Zingone uh, partnership for the Machine Learning Project 1. So first off, all of the data from the data sets has to be loaded in. We've defined these .header files that we can use uh, to determine uh, basically each of the column names along with determining which one is the class column. And then we have support for doing binning. In the example of this breast cancer, we only have one bin for the sample code number. The rest of the values are all given to be discrete. But in something like glass, we have a number of bins that we have to define using this uh, colon that goes between them. These header files are then loaded in in conjunction with the .data files that were provided in whatever sort of data loader that we have specified. Currently, we're running the average invalid loader, so let's take a look at that. So the first thing that this loader will do is it will create a data file class to hold initially just all of the information that we loaded in. And so if we take a look at this DF right here, we can see we have all the names of the columns loaded in along with a mapping for all their valid values. If we look at, I believe it's nine here, we can see that class is a column and it has two values of number data of either two or four. And all of these will be assigned what is called a data point. Data point is simply an abstract class that has three different uh, subclasses, either string representing just a string of data, a number representing a single double, or a bin representing a bin with a min and a max with the maximum being exclusive. If we swap back over to our loader uh, and our debugger, we can see that the sample code number, there it is, I had to find it for a second, will only have one possible value, and that's this bin number data. And that's because this is an ID, and so we wanted to consolidate it down to one bin. As we continue through our code, uh, we will then start adding in data rows. And this is provided first as just a list of the string data, but as we step through the code, it will go through, determine that it's not invalid, and then it will perform discretization on that data. It will determine if that data is a number, and if it is, then we will treat it as such, and we'll loop over all the various different bins that we are able to use. If we find a match with a bin, which in this example here, we do find one as our value, which is our data, is between this dot min and this dot max. So we found a match and we actually set the legitimate data that's saved to be equal to this data point bin. Now that we've hopped out of the data loading, we can then see that our data file has all of our data in one giant array that we needed with the sizes of everything. And we can see that this uh, this first column here, the first value has a bin, and then we have the rest of the proper data in there, including the class identifier. We then jump into our classifier class, which will first be trained, and we train both the Q and the F functions provided in the project file. Uh, and Q is relatively simple to train. We just count the number of instances of the class and divide it by the size of our training row. And this num instances of class simply goes and loops through, there we go, loops through all of the rows and checks if the class is equal. And when we hop out of that, we'll see that our number of instances is 413 there. Moving on, we have our F function that we also need to train. And this is relatively straightforward. We have a pair of attribute value to class value. And we do a count on that, and that's where this plus one is in this Kerr probability. And you can see that once we've finished doing this inner loop over all of the rows, we actually get a number that is that total count. And then we apply our smoothing by adding one to it, and then dividing by the number of class instances plus the number of attributes that we have. If we take a look at our classifier, we can see here is our Q array. It only has two values for the two different classes in this data set, and our F array is significantly larger and will have a lot more data as a part of it. We then run through our test fold and classify each of the examples within it, and you can see that we actually misclassified a number of them here, and that is reflected in our 0-1 loss and our F score that are represented down there.
If we then change the type of loader to add in some noise and rerun the program, you'll see that we'll actually get some different results out of it, and that's reflected in our 0-1 loss and our F1 score as they are significantly lower.